Guys, guys, I just thought of the best idea. I'm not gonna buy a house right now. I'm gonna wait for interest rates to come down and then I'm gonna buy. I'm the only one who's thinking this, right? There's so few people who are thinking of buying in the future when rates come down. Obviously, I'm being satirical here, but I wanna explain to you guys what you could potentially miss out on and what it could cost you if you wait too long. I know this is a bad angle, giving me a double chin, but we're already making this video at this angle, so let's get it. All right. So, tons of people are thinking that exact same thing. Either they're gonna sell and then buy whenever the interest rates come down because, hey, I got a 4% interest rate. I'm gonna wait for them to get closer to five so that I can buy when the rates are closer to what I'm selling at or what I'm sitting at now. Or a ton of first-time buyers who are thinking, you know what, 6.5% interest rate, 6%, they're kinda high. I'd rather buy later. It makes sense, it's intuitive, right? The interest rate contributes to what your monthly payment is. It contributes to what the total cost is gonna be for you know for the house overall, right? What's the whole amount that you pay back to the bank? But the thing is, is that if a whole bunch of people are gonna jump into the market, right? They're waiting for rates to come down. What do you think that's gonna happen? What's that, what's that gonna do to prices? If a whole bunch of people rush in to try to buy a limited number of things, what is that going to do, right? If there's a huge increase in demand and supply is about the same, maybe increasing a little bit, prices are going to shoot up. Same thing happened during the pandemic. So many people rushed to buy the very few houses that were out there because interest rates were low. Now, obviously, it's not going to be as aggressive or as crazy as during the pandemic, but the exact same thing is going to happen if interest rates come down significantly closer to the fives or fours even. So many people are gonna rush in and you're gonna miss out. It's gonna cost you two ways. It's gonna cost you one, because you will likely have to give up certain things if it gets low enough, right? If interest rates get down low enough and tons and tons of people come in, you're gonna, you're gonna miss out because you have to overpay, overpay for properties in the future. The 300 or the 350 houses are gonna go at 360. You're gonna have to give 10,000 more, just like in the pandemic, or more than that potentially, right? You're also gonna have to give up extra stuff, just like in the pandemic, when so many people are writing offers on a property and you've got the, you got the seller, right? We've represented sellers before that have 10 offers on the table, 15 offers on the table, 20 people trying to get into this house. What happens? Well, people offer more money, they have a smaller inspection period, they cover more of the closing costs, if not every single bit of it, and you as the buyer, are gonna be in a tougher spot if you wait for that time where everybody's gonna rush in, right? When you significantly increase the number of buyers, each individual buyer is gonna have less negotiating power against sellers. I know that it seems a little bit counterintuitive and I'm absolutely not saying, everybody, let's go, let's rush in, go, 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 buy a house. You know, forget every single thing that you thought about, buy a house right now, no. What I'm saying is if you have the ability to buy now, or buy in the near future, right? Promotion, making a little bit more money, having your wife work a part-time, whatever the case is, if you're in that type of spot, then you should consider the cost of waiting. Because the second part, the second part being if the houses are at 350, that's about average where we're at. The cost of waiting, if you buy today and what they will be worth in the future, the cost of waiting is that appreciation, right? Because eventually those 300 houses are gonna be 375. Then they're gonna be 400, then they're gonna be three, you're four and a quarter, 450, so on, so on and so forth. On average, about every 20 years or so, home prices double. And in about 10 years, it's gonna be worth half as much more. So the 300 house is gonna be about 450 or somewhere in that range. The 350 house, et cetera, right? So on and so forth. Um, I believe that with inflation, things might even be worse off than that because Inflation is not at the normal three to 6%. <laughs> Inflation is probably around the 10 to 20%, but that's besides the point. You're gonna miss out on what the future cost of that house is. If you could buy today at 350, and in a year and a half from now, it's worth 400,000, you missed out on that 50K worth of appreciation. It's gonna cost you more, so your next, you know, getting a house in the future is gonna be more expensive. I hope you are getting a, a significant increase in your job payment, right, your salary. And two, I hope your down payment is growing at the same amount, not being eaten up by grocery costs increasing or gasoline increasing, all that kind of stuff. But also, you're missing out on that appreciation. If you bought today, when the rates come down and prices shoot up, you're gonna buy at 350, ideally, and then get something up when the rates go down and prices shoot up, your property's gonna be worth 400. 
just an example, right? We'd have to look at each individual case, but I'm giving you the idea here. So with that being said, again, I'm not saying everybody rush in. There's so many people who are in fixed incomes and they can't, um, you know, their partner's in a spot where they can't work, where that particular person is taking care of a disabled family member, whatever, right? There's definitely unique cases for everyone across the board. They don't have uh, proper documentation. They don't have enough money coming in from, you know, entrepreneurial work, whatever. If you can, consider what the costs are. If you can't, consider what you could do so that you can buy. I'm open to people letting me know that they disagree or they agree with me. Let me know down in the comments what y'all think.